In this video, I show you how I installed this inverter in the back of my pickup truck. It's a cheap one, 99 bucks on Amazon, definitely not top of the line by any means. It doesn't have mounting brackets and it has these kind of funky universal sockets, but I went El Cheapo method and it ended up working out pretty well. Um, you'll also need some conduit for the job. This is RTF that I actually got at Harbor Freight Tools. You could put a fuse on this, but instead I used this $12 breaker, which I like because you can shut on and off the system. And you'll need a couple of grommets depending where you go through uh, your truck. And I used a heavy duty 20 foot pair of jumper cables, again on Amazon for 28 bucks. Uh, this is two gauge wire, so plenty big. Uh, for the load of the inverter and then just some uh, battery connectors and I was good to go. Now before I get into the project I'm just going to show you like in diagram form all that in is entailed in this and it's not that complicated. You got the battery up front in the truck then is the switched breaker and the inverter goes way in back. Then all you need to do is run your ground under the cab, up and around, connected to the inverter that's grounded to the battery. Then my hot lead goes to the breaker and out the other side of the breaker and then down around the cab and hook to the inverter and that's it. So it's a pretty simple setup in the end. All right, now my truck is a little different than many and I'll just show you, I've got two batteries. So this is my main battery that the truck runs off of on the left. A cable runs over to the isolator then from the isolator you go to my second battery. So I'm running this baby, this inverter off my second battery. Uh, you don't have to do that, but if you do have a second battery hooked to an isolator, it's cool because you can run the inverter without the truck running and it's not gonna kill your main battery. Anyway, the first thing to do was to install that switch breaker. And I lost some footage here, but this is where the breaker goes. I just kind of hit it out of the way on the side of the truck. And after getting that installed, the next thing to do was to start tuning up the uh, jumper cable wire and I just cut off the big clamps it kind of hurt me to do it but I just cut away at that baby and then attach the uh, connectors so that I could hook up to the battery and I actually used two kinds of conduit on this job uh, this is some quarter inch stuff I got at Harbor Freight and then I also used that fatter one inch conduit that I picked up on Amazon So the first piece of wire I installed is just a short piece that goes from the battery over to my switched breaker. And I'll show you how I did this. Uh, I don't have a big uh, crimper for you know, crimping these automotive wires. So what I do is a little bit different. I use my uh, big old bench vise and a screwdriver. The screwdriver pressed down against the connector makes a nice sort of crimp line you can see right there. All right, so with my wire all ready to go, I connected to the switched breaker and uh, over to the battery. Then I started running my lines down and out of the engine compartment. And here you can just see how that switch breaker works. Uh, it's off right now and then if you click it together it's connected and you click that little red button and it's disconnected. All right, so next thing to do was to run the ground wire up into the engine compartment. And you know, wiring like this, it's always good to hide it off to the side, sort of think about where you want it ahead of time, and then use plenty of zip ties. So I connected the ground wire to my uh, second battery. In some setups, like in a van, you might call this your leisure battery. And then I connected the hot connection, uh, the power connection. And at that point, everything up front was pretty much good to go. So I got under the truck and started running my wires, again grouping them uh, together with zip ties and pretty much running them alongside all my other existing wires that run to the back of the truck. And with that I got out my step drill bit set and started drilling holes in my perfectly good truck. This was definitely hard to do because I like my truck uh, without holes, but uh, this seemed like a good place for the wires to go in through the topper. And then on the outside, I used plenty of uh, that RTF sealant on my uh, grommets and pretty much everywhere else before I started running the wire into the bed area and then through the topper. And again, plenty of that RTF 
uh, sealant on the grommets and kind of all over where the wires are going into the back. All right, so now I'm in the truck and I hope those wires would reach all the way to the back, but they just don't. 20 feet of wire just doesn't go as far as you'd hope. So instead I made kind of a custom mount for the inverter that would attach to the side of the topper. And then with the mount all put together, I just wanted to figure out a way to attach the inverter and kind of uh, strap it in place. And what I did here ended up not working out. I used kind of a basic strap I had laying around the shop to hold the inverter in place and it always kind of wiggled. So you'll see that for a little bit here as I attach it to the topper. But then toward the end of the video, you'll see how I actually reattached it in a much more secure way. So more RTF and just bolting that mount to the side of the topper. And this is just a little trick I always use if I got to attach a bolt and a nut when I can't reach the nut, I just put a pair of vice grips on the nut and that way it won't spin and I can go to the other side and crank it. All right, so the inverter is pretty much mounted. I just need to uh, fix up that strap. So the next thing to do was just to cut my wires and attach them to the inverter. All right, so at that point, it's time to test it out. I went ahead and flipped my breaker and the inverter in the back should be live. I switched it and came on no problem. It's got a fan to keep it cool. And the first thing I did is I plugged in a battery charger. I'm really hoping to be able to charge batteries in the back of this truck and no problem. Again, this is with the truck not running. In some situations, you might need to fire up the truck just so you don't kill your battery. But since I have those two batteries, I'm okay. Anyway, the next thing I did is I plugged in my saw. I want to be able to run just basic tools out of this uh, setup. And I fired up the saw and just like the charger, no problem, plenty of power. And it seems to be working really well. So I switched it off and actually I'm going to keep this thing switched off almost all the time um, unless I'm using it. I just don't see any reason to, to keep it on. And uh, the next thing to do was just to put a better strap on there, one that really cinches down. So I uh, configured this one a little differently so it just gets uh, twice the leverage and that allowed for a really tight connection so that inverter is not going to wiggle around. All right, that's it. Thank you for checking out the video. It is on a playlist about this old 1990 Silverado truck, and I hope to be adding more videos as time goes on. Uh, check me out on Instagram where I keep a photo feed, and I'm also on Patreon where I have a small blog about my projects. Thanks for watching.